protein can't be stored as fat. And if you overeat protein, you won't gain body fat. I think that practically that's probably somewhat true. But I did want to ask you um, if you can explain the thermic, thermic effect of food and do we need to consider anything different when it comes to protein versus carbs and fats? Oh, great. This is a great question. And, and I actually had a, a back and forth with Paul Carter about this uh, a few days ago. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that post where he said that protein isn't stored as body fat. Um, so we'll, we'll, I think this is a great discussion. Um, so basically, what, first off, let's define what the thermic effect of food is. So your body, not unlike a car's engine, you must input energy to extract energy out of your fuel, right? So it's not like you just eat food and all of a sudden the energy is available. You have to digest it, you have to absorb it, you have to assimilate it, and it has to be the, the energy in food, and this is where people get mixed up with calories, Calories is, it's just a, a unit of measurement. It's not, you can't look at a calorie under a microscope, right? Or you know, it, it's just a unit of, it refers to the amount of energy stored in the chemical bonds of food. So the chemical bonds of food contain energy. And when you break those bonds, you are able to transfer that energy into high energy substrates. Like, I mean, the most one people will recognize is ATP, which is your body's basically your energy currency. And then that ATP is able to power reactions throughout your body and throughout your cells. Okay. So it's just the transfer of the energy in those chemical bonds. And the body has developed these elaborate systems in order to capture that energy, but it's not perfect. Uh, there is a decent amount of waste and the thermic effect of food refers to how much energy is required by your body to extract the energy out of those chemical bonds in the food. So for example, if we're talking about dietary fat, the thermic effect of food appears to be anywhere from zero to 3%, meaning, and again, don't think of this as a hard rule, but meaning if you eat hundred calories from fat, you're probably net netting like 97 to hundred calories. Carbohydrates is anywhere from five to 10%. So if you eat hundred calories, you're netting 90 to 95%. Protein seems to be around 20 to 30%. So you're netting around 70 to 80 calories per hundred calories. Now, again, these are all short-term studies. Maybe the body, like if you're eating a high protein diet, maybe the body gets more efficient at extracting calories out of it. Um, that's possible as well, because these are all very short-term studies. Uh, interestingly, alcohol has a high TEF. So all of you people out there who mm -hmm love drinking beer, you know, but again, you know, the, this idea that there's calorie negative foods, no, <laughs> there's no calorie negative food, right? Like you're still, uh, you're still netting some calories out of that. So now let's talk about what that means practically. I don't think it means a whole lot practically to be quite honest, because the, your TEF is such a small amount of your total daily energy expenditure. And I always provide the example of like, I think I did an example on my uh, YouTube channel where I said, if we took the average person's protein and we double it, right? Like if we go from 150 grams a day to like 300 grams a day, you're talking about like basically like 150 calories or 200 calories a day. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not insignificant. It is helpful, but I mean, okay, eat an apple and you've already blown through those 150 calories, right? Like, so it doesn't, just because you eat a high protein diet doesn't mean that you're like immune from putting on body fat, right? Like that's not how it works. Sure. You but get if, a you, if, if you were to increase the percentage of protein though, that could potentially be true, right? Hey guys, are you still drinking sugary hydration drinks like Gerid? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what that is, but Element, one of our sponsors, has an amazing electrolyte mix of sodium, potassium, magnesium, the perfect blend to hydrate you before a workout with no sugar. It's great while you're on a fast or if you're on a low-carb diet or if you're on any diet. Just check them out. They're amazing. Andrew, tell them how to get it. 
You guys got to head over to drinklmnt.com slash power project, uh, load up on a value bundle that's getting four boxes for the price of three. Again, that's at drinklmnt.com slash power project. Head over there right now. So again, like if we go to like 20 to 20 percent of calories from protein to 40 percent of calories from protein, we get I mean, again, depending on the total calorie intake, but we get like 100 to 200 calories more daily energy expenditure. Um but you'd al- but you'd also be replacing the carbohydrates and fat. So you would <laughs> do you understand yes. what I'm saying? Like increasing not the grams yeah. that you take per day, but the percentage could have right. a tremendous value. So I, I actually include that as part of the calculation I when I did on my YouTube channel. Um so the point is, yes, it does make a difference. I think more practically, protein is very satiating, right? Like it's pretty hard to overeat on protein. Mm-hmm. And so that gets to my next point, which uh Paul, and I'm not wanting to hate on Paul. I'm going to explain why I think he's right and wrong <laughs> in this, but that, you know, practic- you know, I think he's mostly right. Uh, but he said protein is almost never stored as body fat. Um, that from a mechanistic standpoint. So let's, let's go to a cellular level. If we label uh, protein or label amino acids so we can track them, do I think that many of those carbon skeletons from amino acids will wind up in adipose tissue? No, I do not, because it is a long way from A to Z. I mean, they've got to be deaminated. Then they've got to either go through like the the TCA cycle to get converted back to a substrate. I mean, you basically got to get to the point where it's, you know, going through de novo lipogenesis and gluconeogenesis, unless it's a ketogenic substrate, which uh, in, in which case it could be a little bit more of a straight shot. But I mean, even for example, carbohydrate, the amount of carbohydrate stored in, in adipose tissue is small. When they overfeed people in studies, they find that less than 2% of the stored fat in adipose tissue was derived from carbohydrate. So now that doesn't mean carbs can't make you fat if you overeat them, because when you eat carbohydrate, what happens? Well, even though it's not stored as as fat, your body almost exclusively stores dietary fat in adipose tissue. Even though carbs aren't stored as fat, they must be oxidized. And so your body switches from oxidizing fat to oxidizing more carbohydrate. So it spares the dietary fat that you have eaten for uh, storage in adipose tissue. Mm. And this has led people to say, well, this is why you should separate your carb and fat meals and just do fat at one meal and carbs. <laughs> Again, you're trying to hack your body and your body's smarter than you are, right? So you always, like you always have uh, triglyceride, or sorry, you always have free fatty acids that are in your bloodstream. Like they're, they're always there. They can, they can go up or down. But even when you eat a meal, they're still around like, you know, six, seven hours later in a lot of cases. So unless you're just going to completely omit fat out of your diet, you're always going to have some to store as fat in adipose. And let's say you, let's just go to the extreme example. Let's say you were eating a carb only diet or protein and carb only diet. Well, guess what? Your body can ramp up its level of de novo lipogenesis in order to accommodate that. So again, if you go to the extreme case, your body even, even then can find a way it's not going to not capture energy, but how does this, how does this relate to protein? Well, um, there's some free living studies. Uh, Bill Campbell's done one. Uh, Jose Antonio's done one where they overfeed protein. Like they go on really high protein diets and they really don't see people gain body fat. And the conclusion to those has been, well, you, you know, protein can't be stored as fat. And if you overeat protein, you won't gain body fat. I think that practically that's probably somewhat true because it's very hard to overeat on protein. And let's think about what people have difficulty with in terms of underreporting. People usually overreport protein. They underreport carbohydrates and fats. Like if you've ever been somebody, like when you just get into lifting and somebody says, hey, eat a high protein diet, you're like, I eat high protein. And then you track it and you're eating like 110 grams a day and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, never mind. 
But what were you underreporting? You were underreporting how many carbs and fats you're eating. So I think in those studies, what's happening is because the food, again, you're dealing with dietary recalls, which are notoriously inaccurate. Because protein is so satiating, people think they're eating more than they actually are. And, you know, again, I mean, you hear from low carb people all the time. They say, I said, I switched or carnivore people are like, I'm eating way more now than I was before. You're eating more volume of food. You're not eating more calories. That's the difference. You, you feel more satiated. So I always default when we're talking about a topic like this to what are the most tightly controlled studies say? So there has, there's really one really good study on this by a guy named Bray. Uh, and it's a metabolic ward study where they overfed, they had three different levels of protein. They had low, normal, and high. And what they found was that all three groups gained similar amounts of body fat, but the high protein diet gained significantly more lean body mass than the other groups. Okay. Now, why do we see that? Well, again, just like carbohydrate, if you eat, if you eat excess protein, you have to do something with it right now you're not going to really store it in adipose tissue you can store some of it in lean tissue but that is capped and so what happens to the rest well you have to oxidize it and if you're oxidizing it then you're not oxidizing as much dietary fat and that dietary fat can be stored in adipose now that's the again that's long answer so on a, from a practical standpoint is it difficult to gain body fat on a high protein diet? Kind of. Uh, although, you know, ask a bodybuilder who's been in the off season before you can do it. <laughs> you know, you can do it. There's plenty of guys who are eating over 300 grams of protein today, packing on some body fat. Mm -hmm. um, but for your average person, is it a relatively reasonable recommendation that if you're going to overfeed to increase your protein intake so that, you know, you're getting a little bit more TEF and you're more satiated? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that that's fine. I just, again, I try to be very careful with the messaging because what you're going to have is you're going to have people who aren't going to modify their carbohydrate and fat intake, mm -hmm. and they're just going to be shoveling down protein in the form of like protein bars and, you know, like these high protein treats. And they're going to be saying, oh, I'm not going to get fat because it's high protein. Yeah. It's also ultra processed, hyper palatable. It's yeah, you know, it's definitely you, you have you to gotta, consider that you're going to eat other things along with protein. It's rare, unless you're really paying attention to what you're doing, that you're going to eat, sit down and eat like 10 egg whites or tilapia or chicken breast and mainly only supply yourself with protein. Most likely you're going to have a steak or something and there's you're going to under report how much fat is in there and over report how much protein is in there.